Hey there and welcome to episode 9. So carrying on from episode 8, which I hope you've just finished watching, um, I have just tacked in the front bed mount, so that's now in place. And moving on to the rear, now I want to put this um, original rear bumper on because it's got a tow hitch and this truck's going to have a rake, so if I put a bit of weight on the back it'll bring it down a little bit. So we're going to be figuring out how to fit this on. Next what I'm going to do is I'm going to fit the um, doors because Although I've done the front mount, uh, the back is still on this uh, axle stand here, so I need to know what angle to sit it at. And the way I do that is I run string from the front of the truck all the way to the back and just follow the dent, no, the bump, Jesus, the bump, the body line all the way back. And that's what gives me, you know, the straight panel line. So next on the agenda is putting the doors on. He's definitely looking more complete. I've got to admit, I'm still liking it. Haven't gone off it yet. Oh, haven't gone off it yet. Still looking pretty cool. It actually looks less hot roddy than I thought it would, to be honest with you. There's way less of a rake than I thought. Happy days. So I'm going to take the bed off now and finish up the mounts uh, and bed line them. Well, what a bloody step back. But, huh? You have things to do. So, here we go. Bed mounts. So I've got those the front two. And then those are two flat plates that I've just welded onto there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to extend a rod from underneath here, I think, to that. Why not give it some more, give the chassis some more rigidity? Makes sense to me. And then the back end, super simple. Super duper simple. You can see, that's the uh, original truck frame. Happy days, happy, happy days. The bed is off yet again, and there is a reason why. Cause look, we're painted. So all the welding is finalized. I left the Crown Vic frame horns long cause they're not in the way of anything. And if you want to add anything on, I just thought it'd be handy to have them there. So I've capped them. Let's say everything's bed lined. Those are the original truck rear frame rails. The bed's going to mount onto another rear Bumper's going to mount onto as well. Chopped out this area for the fuel filler to come out and I figure out what to do. And these are the front intermediate mounts. Now what I was going to do, I was going to triangulate them down to there. But then I thought, this is a damn fine point to run a bar forward to the front mounts. So those two are the front mounts there. So we have another point of like stiffness, if you will, coming from here all the way forward to that mount, which is tied into this one here, which is tied into that cross member, which is tied into the cab, which is tied into the front mount, which is kind of, which will hopefully replicate how stiff this chassis should be with a Vic single body on it. Cause I'm gonna try and get away with not bolting the bed. Don't know, that, that's the idea today. But what I've realized over these uh, um, videos that I've been doing is I say one thing in one video and then do something completely different in the next video. So that's my idea now. Whether that is going to be the case in the future, who knows? So as I say, I mean that's super strong. That that inch box there goes all the way back and forward and it's super thick as well. And that plate's pretty thick, so yeah, that's not going anywhere. So all bed mounts done and painted. So I'm gonna hit the underneath of the bed right now with the wire wheel that's my new best friend, wherever it may be. That thing, the red thing. Awesome. I'm going to hit the underneath of it with the wire wheel 
um, and do some rubberized undercoating on the welded parts. We are well and truly on the bed, so there you can see welding's done. I'm actually going to throw some filler in there because there was a little bit of distortion. Just get it a little bit nicer. And then that one, and then that one. I've not done the inside of these welds yet, but I will do. And so we're on to this today. So I um, made this box section, which is basically going to, well, it's not going to sit like that. Nice. Um, there's going to be three of them, one there, side and side. And then this sheet, which is actually not quite big enough. Uh, it's not quite wide enough, so there is going to be a gap at the side, but I don't know what I'm going to do and how I'm going to mate it up to the wheel wells anyway. So a gap will probably be nice. So that's the sheet. And I'm going to try and keep it in one piece and bend it. And I have no for no way of bending it. Um, but we need to make something. It's going to involve a piece of metal, cutting slits in it, putting it in between my trash cans, and leaning on it, I think. Sounds like a plan. So right now you can see here, slits are in and I've also done a groove. Hopefully we'll get a pretty straight line when we bend this. Here we go. Wish me luck. This is trash can panel, but panel bending. That is finest. There he goes. <laughs> Where there is a will, there is a way. I hope he doesn't snap. This is 16 gauge. so far. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty good. So now Happy days. Put some spots along here just to give it some structural. Let me show you. There we go. Trash can panel bending. Bending? Belding? What kind of word's that? Trash can panel bending. So this is going to be the hump for the bed. Happy days. Save me a bit of welding time there. So here we have the upside down bed hump. Now, hopefully if the edit's right, you'll have just seen the fact that I folded both of these sides as in I folded them, I didn't cut them. And now you can see we have one folded side and one cut side. And that's because I'm a plonker. I'm just a plonker. <laughs> Nothing else you can say. So, what happened was, I um, made a measurement on the steel and then I thought, well, I'll give myself an extra half inch. Now, I then inadvertently took a measurement from one, measure, one line on, on one side, 
and one line on the other, which was half an inch difference. So when I actually folded it and then put these uh, the framework inside, it was a half inch out. And the folds and the cuts had been made by that point. So there was no going back. So we have one fold on one side and a lot of welding practice on this side. Happy days. Can you spot the weld? <laughs> oh my God, my humor. I'm, I'm just wasted building cars. I am wasted. Spot the weld. <laughs> so, what's underneath? Uh, we have some little L bracket situations that we're going to put on right around there. And that's going to give us some feet to sit the actual kind of exterior of it up against the corrugated part. And then I can weld that all the way along and then start to build the sides. So, yeah, that's the underside done. Definitely a decent bit of progress made from yesterday. This central piece is all welded in. I actually stopped it so I've got all those gaps at the bottom because especially at the front it'll create a water trap. I mean this bed has got so much crap blocking these front vents, or just uh, not vents, her uh, drains. That's why plenty of draining. And there's a cross member right there so it's plenty strong. So this is really close but obviously I've got a build the filler panels to take it right to the wheel wells and put the, the filler cap somewhere right here, probably come up, extend it sideways and have it a bit more off to the side than in the original orange truck. So yeah, so I've got to extend and just build filler panels for there. And also um, put some Bondo and some primer on those uh, cab extension pieces. Now, this is not my forte at all, but as you can see, so did the put the bondo on then took it down with 60s and then put the the um primer on top just to see how close i've got because you know i was feeling it with my fingers and you know it seemed pretty flat but as you can see from there it's not at all so we're up to 400s now wet and dry and we'll see how baby's bottom smooth we can make it here we are midway through pre-grinding see if we can lighten it up a little bit so we're just making these super fiddly bloody filler pieces. We'll take all those welds down. Then extending the back out. Wish cutting the metal was as easy as cutting the cardboard. But that's so it'll, it just kind of flares out like that. So obviously that's like that on the passenger side and on the driver's side. It's gonna be a bit more intricate because the fuel filler's gonna be around here. There a little bit of progress. So all the, uh, all the joins which I know aren't super good right now. Uh, still have to be wet sanded a few more times and maybe another skim filler, but I just wanted to get some paint on it because this is gonna go outside tonight and it, the bare metal just rusts so fast, the welded metal. So that's uh, all kind of sealed in. So that, obviously the white isn't right. So I'm gonna be buying, I think it's Wimbledon white uh, over the next couple of days. And that is the top layer that's gonna go on and then it'll be get sanded back down to age it. Um, did the end pieces I think I showed you that in the last video so today basically I'm going to be finishing everything on all these seams so there's going to be a ton a ton a ton a ton of grinding uh, yeah. that seam to finish and there's a little bit more welding over there but mainly today it's going to be grinding and then cleaning that put some primer on it so it seals it and also I'm going to be putting some primer on this probably to about there to seal it in um, when I take the bed off because I'm going to be doing the, the gas fill around here and obviously I want bare metal for that so that's the plan for today yay let's get ready for grinder dust okay so all the uh, welding is done that side's filled in the seam all the way along the top of here that is all welded uh, those cut slits are all welded that side's finished welded now we're just going to knock some of the ugly off with a with a grinder wheel oh we're probably like an hour grinding for like an hour where's me Arthur rob when you need him he's like professional grinder professional level like he's higher than a professional level grinder he's like there's no level been made for him okay so it is a few hours later i've inhaled a ton of aluminum oxide um grinding disc and everything is as ground flat as it's going to get 
and all those grounds. So as I say, I'm only going to paint up till here. So what I'm going to do right now is the bed has to go back outside for a couple of days. So I don't want to leave the bare metal to get rusty again. So I'm going to do brush on paint. I uh, saw a guy online and he had painted a primer, then a dark colour, then a lighter colour, and then went and dried it so the dark colour came through and it kind of gave it that patina look. And originally I was going to bed line of the whole bed, but um, Christy, my wife, thought that it'd be good to try and match this hump with the rest of the bed because that's the history of the truck. This needs to be a painter's truck because it's got paint everywhere. So we're going to give it a go and see how it works out. So I'm going to go with a white primer. Then here, I actually bought this for the orange truck, got that stuff. I'm going to put that on next. And then I'm going to go with a, you know, a gloss white top coat and then hit it with some sandpaper and Bob's your uncle, Fanny's your aunt. Right then, we either have the beginning of a masterpiece or a pig's ear and only time will tell which one it is. So painted on white primer all over there, as I say, kept that side clear because I'm going to do the filler and let that dry. All of the, the welds are, are pretty flat down there now. Again, going to be putting some brown in there. Sand it down, see how, how close we can get it. See how we can age it with Fotina. And in the last video, we talked about the intake, which would not clear the pipes. This is super close, but it does it. So I got some aluminum three inch stock from the local steel stockholders when I was getting the steel for the bed and chopped it down and then this part is the original crown vic bit because it's got the airflow meter in it right there and then i chopped the air box off it basically and just put this old air filter on for now so yeah not very restrictive i don't think pretty clear and i just need to make a mount probably going to need to extend the wiring actually for that airflow meter because i want the, the filter to sit up a little higher because it's got plenty of room so uh yeah i need to they figure out some kind of mount to, I'm thinking, go into that part, screw into it, and then put some probably Permatex black around it to make it airtight. So yeah, happy days. Okay, let's take the bed off. Bed's coming off to uh, get bed lining underneath. So as you can see, we just thrown some white on there as a base for the joins. That's going to get rubbed down again. We've seen all that before. Sorry, didn't see that step. There we go, so bed off, bed liner. Uh, tidy a few things up and then bed back on for good. Well, thank you for watching episode 9. It's been a fun one, it really has. And episode 10 is going to get even better because it's going to look even more truck-like. How I'm going to do it and the order in which I'm going to do it I don't know, I've kind of given up on that part, but there will be progress, there'll definitely be progress. As I say, thanks for watching, and don't forget about Nathan's Garage on Facebook, and Nathan's Garage Official on Instagram. Catch you next time.